In this week's vlog, we're hit with challenging weather and a very near miss, and I battle the elements to follow in someone's footsteps. It's a really windy day today, but we had to move Alice Grace back to Bosley Locks to the top of the flight, and that's because we left her for a few days. We came back to Bosley Locks to leave Alice Grace because we felt that she'd be safer here because there's lots of people milling around and people going up through the locks, and fortunately, she was safe. But this is the summit of the Macclesfield Canal and it's really exposed, so hopefully by moving we'll be more sheltered. <laughs> we'll have to see how it goes. The further away we get from the top of the flight, the less exposed we'll be, I think. Just trying to stay away from all the trees, keep it in the middle. If it wasn't for the bridges, a sail would be a perfect way to propel a narrow boat today. The Chesterfield Canal's cuckoo boats of the past used the wind to power them. This is a reconstruction of one called the Dawn Rose, and this is a gorgeous old photo of a cuckoo boat with a mast down. It's going to be about a three and a half hour journey today and we're hoping to moor near Kerridge Dry Dock but these waters are new to us and we have no idea how suitable the moorings might be with a storm approaching. Just going to moor up here and then there's a post box just past the swing bridge. I've got to post some of my books. A viewer of the channel, Robert, said he used to come down to this swing bridge in his lunch break and there's a really lovely classic car dealership just opposite the road here so I thought we'd have a little look. Ah, there it is. Dolan Classic. It's run by a guy called TJ Dolan who used to be a graffiti artist and now he sells classic cars. That's a Robin Malayan. And with the winds quickly gathering speed, I make my way through the swing bridge. Oh, there's so much smoke here. It's only someone's garden fire, it's nothing to worry about, but it's really kicking out smoke. Beautiful doggy. Did you say hello to the beautiful doggy? Now this is where I ended up, in this spot. This is right near Danes Moss, before I had to move the boat backwards, um, before I went away. Now, walking through Danes Moss is a really interesting village, and I want to take you there because it links to Tannercliffe. 
Charles Tunnicliffe lived in Sutton Lane Ends, and until he became an established wildlife artist, he grew up on a farm there. He's illustrated many books in his lifetime, and I've got a copy of his book called My Country Book, where he describes one of his favourite walks. On this wild and windy day, I am going to do a walk that Charles Tunnicliffe would love to do. Are you ready for this madness? Are you? Let's do this. In the book, Charles mentions that he starts at the Harrington Arms, so that's where I'm off to first. This gorgeous old pub still looks the same from when it was converted from being a farmhouse in 1710. So, what did he say? The avenue was lined with these elms and limes. There were thrushes and flatbirds singing and chaffinches. On the right hand side, he saw lapwings flying above the cattle. And then he comes to the church. So, let's do this. Charles Tunnicliffe said of Galsworth that there is an air about the place which attracts me, whatever the time of year. It's quiet and detached, away from the busy traffic of the main road, yet it never appears sleepy. Scarlet mustard blowing in the wind. Oh my goodness, some bluebells, the first, first bluebells that I've seen. So this is on the side that I'm walking, this is on the left hand side, the view. Tunnicliffe spent hours between his farm work sitting in fields around here sketching animals and landscapes. That's a rook, that one, by the massive beak, you can tell. Ooh. And this is the where he spotted the lapwing, but it has just started to rain. Can't hear any lapwing though, to be honest with you. Um, but he did also talk about lapwing that he saw in Bosley and I have filmed lapwing in Bosley. The idea of an Easter bunny actually comes from lapwings they believe because lapwings sometimes lay their eggs in a hair shallow scraping and in Victorian times when they used to collect the lapwing eggs at Easter time they would often find them next to a sleeping hare. All the lesser celandine and then, just here you can make out the church, St James's Church. What I found really amazing is it says in the book, as I reach the stone steps leading into the churchyard, jackdaws leave the niches and battlements in a noisy throng and circle round, soon to settle again on their ancient perches. Jackdaws rarely leave their nesting sites, so this family of jackdaws is probably related to the family of jackdaws that Tuncliffe saw. But the book also tells of how inside the church it's haunted by the ghost of Mary Fitton, who was believed to be Shakespeare's lover and who he referred to as the Dark Lady in his sonnets. In fact, on the anniversary of Shakespeare's death, what's believed to be Mary's face suddenly appeared on the church steps. 
In St James's Church in Sutton Lane Ends, Tunnicliffe was a choir boy when he was younger, and he talks about how he used to sketch in the hymn books. Now, even though I was in a different St James's Church, I couldn't resist checking one of the hymn books just in case I found one of his sketches. Wouldn't it be amazing if I pick one up and there's these pictures and the artwork? No sketches in the hymn book, but I have got a gorgeous sketch that he did of the church itself. Coming up to a swing bridge, and it's not easy to operate this, it, it requires muscle power something I am lacking in the arms but got lots of in my head. <laughs> you need a key though and I put my coat on because it's got chilly again. Ready? Let's go. Some of you have asked me does Zephyr ever jump off the boat and she has never ever jumped off the boat. She's never jumped off the boat and she wouldn't jump off the boat unless you told her to. So um, that's why uh, she's good like that. She's very safety conscious. More safety conscious than I am, I think. Okay, here we go. Oh, God. <laughs> here we go. This bridge is the very last example of a Macclesfield Canal swivel bridge. There were 12 of these before, all of which have been removed. But because this was the last one left, when it fell into disrepair, it was decided that it should be restored. Quarter, half, three quarters. Lift the white Insert key and turn anti-clockwise. Oh, I was doing it clockwise. Right, let's try again. I consider myself very lucky looking back at this, not because I got the swing bridge to open, but because I had a very near miss. The winds were really starting to increase at this point, as you can see by the movement of the trees. But an hour after I left this swing bridge, the towpath that you can see as I was walking up and where Zephyr is standing here was suddenly covered by a falling tree. This gorgeous hill in front of us is called Teg's Nose. And once again, the views on the Macclesfield Canal take my breath away. Now that little row of houses is stunning. 
Hatton Road Terrace of Houses. This is a lovely old stone wall. On the right hand side here is a gorgeous pub called Sutton Hall Pub which has a Bronze Age barrow in its grounds and a 12th century history of Sutton's inhabiting a manor here. This is right on the canal, this all this lovely trees, this garden centre I can see she's in. in. another turnover bridge. Hopefully there's going to be a nice spot to drop Alice Grace. Problem now is that really I'm looking for arm code because I don't really want to be on pins. Coming into Bollington so um, oh there's loads of boats up ahead there must be a spot there. Now we're going through bridge 28 because you can't find anywhere with mooring rings or arm coat and we don't really want to be on pins in this weather so because there's a lot more wind and rain forecast it was actually quite difficult trying to find the suitable mooring considering high winds were coming our way look here we are going past holly the cafe boat which looks like it's just closed which is a real shame because we would have stopped off and had a cake and a coffee Well, Bollington is gorgeous. We're still continuing on because there aren't any mooring rings and there isn't any armco. Still no mooring rings and we're now on bridge 27. We're also trying to look for a spot that isn't underneath too many trees. But then we see a gap with a little compromise. It looks like it's got one ring and we may have to put one pin in the bag and it's slap bang right on top of Bollington Aqueduct. from the boat up here is spectacular so it's nowhere near where I wanted to moor this week but my goodness what an amazing place to be I mean just look at it and now we've just got to hope that being suspended above a road on a 196 year old aqueduct is the best place to be in a storm
petal bells peel silently, shaken by the squall, which roars and calls incessantly in its blustery brawl. The battlements and niches, ancient, worn and scarred, surrounded by the screeches of jackdaws on their guard. The cut-out drain is pummeled, tides whip across its skin, wind wails and cries vent-funneled to those sheltered within, who dream of bluebell skies for storm to cease its throng, so bees can softly rise and orchestrate their song. Mm-hmm.